Beginning, beginning, it was in 1848 when the, my family moved from Germany to a French harbor called Dunkirk. And they're supposed to go to Brazil because at this time Brazil was just took over by the, the Spanish. No, the Portuguese, Portuguese. Yeah. But the time to sell what they have and to walk to the beach, to the harbor, the price of the ticket tripled. So they could not afford to, to leave France. And they refused to go back to Germany. So it was about 2,000 German stuck in the city, living under the bridge and begging to survive for months. And then Napoleon III at this time took Algeria. And he needed people to, to fill this country. So he took the, the jail people and he think about this German stuck over there. And he sent them to Algeria, but from Dunkirk we had to go around Portugal, uh, Spain and go back in. So the long way. It was something like two or three months trip with the seven boat with the sail. And most of them made it, probably 10, 15 died during the, the trip. The whole village was German, 100%. But at one point, the French government sent one man to plant pine on the beach to hold the sand. And this man was Lescombe. This Lescor has a wife, but she was one of the first to grow grapes in 1900 and she got a silver medal on the wine competition in 1900. The woman did. Woman, woman, always. Always. <laughs> always. <laughs> so all of the winemakers before you grew wine only in Algeria? Yeah, but it was a... Uh, I would say not a rough wine making, but basic wine. We have no control of stabilization, no control of anything. 100% of the winery was built with cement because we have no forest to have a wood for cask and we have no stainless steel, no plastic at this time. So the only way to have a winery was cement. So we have thousands and thousands and thousands of cement, cement, cement. It was a big business. And my first winery in France and Burgundy I did it in cement too. How many siblings did you have? Uh, I, I, I was supposed to be the last one, five, and then two twin girls came. So <laughs> I lost my... <laughs> <laughs> Baseball. Yeah. <laughs> and did all of you get out of Algeria? Same time. Well, I, I left first with my brother because by the time Arabic took over, become crazy. So they were shooting everywhere. So. And I was at the beach at noon, as usual, when my mother got a phone, you two boys are going to be killed tomorrow, Sophie. She panicked. When I came back home, my bag was ready with my brother. I don't know how my father found this banana ship. So he drove us to Mostaganem, which is eight miles. And we jumped on banana ship and we left. That was it. So you and your brother left first then? First, and then we went to France. I have no idea what France was. So, so we follow my older sister who came a year before, which is Pierre, okay. mother. And he, he came here before with money, because if, when you wait too much, everything you have has no value. So he, has time he sold some land, some vineyard. He, he came to France with some money, so we went to him. In fact, he, we were 23 people for one year in the house. 20 people? 20. Well, all the friends and cousins and <coughs> grandmother and on and on. And then you went into the army, the French army. At 19, right? You went to the French army at 19? Uh, 20, 19, year after, 20. 20? 20, 20, okay. 20, 21, or even 22. And then I met my wife, 22, married, uh, yeah, my dad, 23. 
Mm -hmm. so, Go ahead. How did you get out of the army? So, what was it like to be in the French army? Well, at this time, you had to. See, it was the the law. You had to go. It was mandatory. Yeah, in my my brother time, it was three years. It was a long time. My time was only sixteen months or eighteen months. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, tell us about meeting Danielle. Well, her family moved from Belgium at, at the end of the, the war because Belgium is very small, there's no way for a farmer to, to expand. So they moved to a village called Tonnerre, like a thunder, Tonnerre. And when I moved, the farm we bought with my brother-in-law by phone was only two miles away. So uh, we met one day uh, dancing. That's it. That's it. That's it. One night of dancing. I never got out of the house. I was working seven days a week. My mother said, one day, one Sunday, go out. So I went out. I went to the dancing. <laughs> and you were 23. That's what you said. Uh, uh, how old was she? 22. Right? Maria, the year after. And, and how old would she have been then? She's, uh, she was 20. She was one year younger. One, one year younger. And what was she like? What she like? What was she like at that age? At 21. Well, she was the hard working girl at the farm because the father was very tough. Like in the in Belgium, when you harvest your grain, you process your grain, you use machine to to clean your grain and put the bag. So she moved a ton, a ton of wheat by herself. When I told my wife about New Mexico, so she came once in the middle of Ingle. Was she really excited? <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody came around, and she said, I'm never come here. <laughs> well, bought a house, and she moved in a nice house, and I was moving back and forth every three months. From France to here? Mm -hmm. But after one year, she gave up, and she came. <laughs> It took one year. <laughs> it took one year. You should have seen the house. There wasn't a reason with the house in Bowen, France. It was a special house. The one that he, so this, this place that y'all moved to for that year, it was, what was about the house? Special. Oh, uh, <laughs> the house. It was a cheap house because it was built on the hill. But the guy who built it dug too much in the hill. And the top of the hill, the city cut to put a back, big pipe, water pipe. And what happened between the pipe and the house, the, the whole mountain moved down. So it moved down to the previous owner, and the wife got depressed and sold it for cheap. I bought it. Smart. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> and this time I got the bulldozer, I got the equipment, I said, okay, I'm going to move this mountain up. So I dug, 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 built a pillar. For the size of the pillar was a, a box of Oh, at least a box of one. Yeah. Yeah. Ten yeah. feet deep and twenty feet up. Mm -hmm. We were with seven of them like that. Okay. And then I left to New Mexico. <laughs> but what happened with the rain? The dirt was a lot of clay become sleety and I wasn't up there. And slowly the, the mountain moved back. Slowly probably that per day. When it hit my wall, it was okay for a week. But it was pushing and pushing and pushing. The noise. <laughs> the wall didn't hold. <laughs> the noise when it broke. The problem when the pillar broke with the rebar, it was holding down and the mountain pushed everything seven times back to the house. <laughs> So, so at this house, you were not there. I was not there. I Danielle know, was there with the boys. I yeah. all the neighbors came with tractor and they emptied the house in a few hours. Right. And wait and wait. And when this seven. But this happened during the night. Oh yeah, it was yeah. raining all night. You could really get out of the house. It was fun. It was fun. Yes. And when the cement came, the house up to stop it. So the house was never destroyed. Wow. Yeah. Where did you go to? Where did you flee to in the middle of the night? All the neighbors. <laughs> neighbors. Yeah. yeah. Friends. Friends, yeah. That's right. That's right. So no <laughs> wonder she moved to New Mexico. You <laughs> 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 moved to the mountains. That was part of the plan. <laughs> <laughs>
Wow. That's pretty crazy. So, Angle, New Mexico, you were coming back and forth every three months. Mm -hmm. And then what made you pull the trigger finally? You sent a manual, right? Or No, I came. When I came, my plan was to move my Moroccan people with me. So I gave them the ticket, airplane ticket. But once I arrived at the custom, no way. <laughs> so I was alone. And Pierre, my nephew, said, OK, can I come for a month? OK, come. So he came in 1980 with me, and he's still here. He never left. <laughs> and together, we planted the 25 acre in the TRC. But so you were, make sure I understand, you were trying to bring some of the Moroccan, of some course, of your workers. Like crew, Jabafi and all, you know. Because you needed, I mean, yeah, you, you yeah, were going to yeah, need help yeah. when you got oh, here yeah, to yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah. And they helped you I didn't know anything about visa or whatever, so... So um, for you, did, I mean, how was, how did you come? Did you well, for one year, I was almost lying because I was coming so far. They asked me, why did you come off here? I said, oh, my father is rich, so he gave me, they believe me, but after one year, I have to go to a lawyer to get a visa. Okay. So then when did you move the whole family? Year after. Everybody came together. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I you told were around them. nine and thirteen, roughly yeah. age. Eleven, thirteen. Eleven and thirteen. Yeah. Was I told them twenty kilo and we leave. That's it. <laughs> and we left it another. So where did you move into when you moved? To ah, so I live one year in the TRC at the Inger house. Mm -hmm. It was a brand new house without power, without water. So we had an airstrip and a swimming pool. Oh yeah, no water. <laughs> it wasn't. So it wasn't finished. I mean, they built. Is that what it was? Like they mm -hmm. built it and just didn't finish it. Yeah. No, there was no water. No, it was the water. The water was real bad over there. They never drilled a well for it. Right. But sure. they built a pool before they yeah. figured that out. Right. Cool. Makes a lot of sense. It was much like a demo, you know, like a yeah. to attract yeah. people. Yeah. It was a nice house. Yeah. <laughs> Double door refrigerator, refrigerated air. One snake per bedroom. Mm -hmm. One snake per bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> so how long did you farm at Ingle? I stayed about one year and a half when I decided to move. At this time I found Deming and Rosberg. Every farm was for sale this time because the bank was broke, they needed cash, and they saw this crazy French coming with some money, so it, they were dripping on me. So first I bought one square mile uh, next to the old one right here, just for myself. But when people keep coming to Ingle to buy land, they heard my move. So I sent my nephew, my uh, my vineyard in Eagle put a, a sign for sale with a phone number. And the first airplane who came, the guy called me and he was leaving back to Europe. So we met on the highway and on the hood of the pickup truck, we signed the contract. So I sold it three times. So when did you start the Blue Teal tasting room? Blue Teal? Tasting room. There was a tasting the room. Fountain the Fountain Theater. Fountain Theater, 87. And you worked there. Yeah, it was a good deal because Messier was not none at this time. It was just paving the plaza. Mm. It was dirt plaza. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was my mother, our mother, that basically started the whole taste mm -hmm. room. That was, a, that was a her passion, definitely. Yeah. Was it her idea? Yeah. Not about her idea, but she loved to be part of people, right? And she loved to talk. She yeah, social, talk social. Even though she had a hard time talking English, she loved to talk. That was not a problem. So, but, uh, the people she, liked it. Oh, yeah, people, people liked it. it was very she got unique. a special accent. Right. Well, she can afflict you. It's <coughs> really And over all these years, you, you think about I mean, working with family is not easy. Right? It's not really I mean, a challenge. So, y'all running this business and going through all of this discussion we've had, you know, dad with two sons. Was it always easy? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> we all think different. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing that I don't niche. Yeah. It's something that's uh, very important to to have that. If we didn't, if I if I had to want to be a farmer with them, 
Pi did not work very well. No. <laughs> Uh, what were the biggest challenges with y'all? I mean, as, as the three of you working, I mean, obviously we've discussed all the business challenges, but what did y'all have to learn how to work with each other? We had to lose concentrate being stubborn. <laughs> Here they have question. What, what is it that you admire most about each of them? Well, it helped me to rebuild family roots in different countries. It's not easy. Yeah, no. And that, that's the price, that's not what they have to make it. Did you think you would ever work with your sons when they were young? Uh, it was a rough time, but it was okay. Mm -hmm. but I have a bad time or two. Oh. Really? <laughs> it's not like we've gotten that. <laughs> And same question for you guys. What do you admire the most of your dad? Oh, diversity. I mean, to try to think outside that box, right? To be, there's no, there's no closed doors. You make the closed doors, really. Yeah. They're there. Just use them. Well, that's the biggest strong. That's it. Yeah. You learn, you learn from me? Yeah. No limits. No limits. And there's definitely something y'all got from him is is that I, I don't think there is a belief within the three of y'all that there's not really anything you can't do. I mean, I really feel that way. That, that there's just not much. That if you kind of decide it or dream it, the thought of you might not could do it, it doesn't exist. You know, no. it's like, no, yeah, we can believe it. Believe it. Never stop the dream. Like he always says, you've got to have that carrot to survive in front of you for the rest of your life, right? So whatever that carrot is, you always got to look for it. If you don't look for it, you're going to die again. I call it the carrot. <laughs> <laughs> don't eat it, but have it. <laughs> Just keep it right there in front of you. Yeah. Yeah.